Hello everyone, this is Vaseem from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session in which I'm going to talk about building REST API using Python. Now let's take a look at the agenda for this session. Firstly, I will start with the basic introduction to API and after this I will discuss various terminologies related to APIs. Moving further, I will explain what is REST and finally we will build a REST API using Python. I hope you guys are clear with the agenda. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Edureka. And do check out Edureka's Python programming certification program. The link is given in the description box below. Now, without any further ado, let us understand what is an API. API or application programming interface is a part of a computer program that is designed to be used by another computer program. The computer programs need to communicate with themselves quite frequently or with the operating system and the bridge between the programs is basically an API. And then again, we have the web APIs that can be manipulated by other programs with the help of Internet and the sole purpose is to gather information or specific functionalities. For example, we have different web APIs for platforms like YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, etc. Wherein we can simply gather information or functionalities using programs written in programming languages like Python. And before discussing the terminologies in an API, let us also discuss the need for creating an API. The very basic objective of creating an API is to share the data with our users. It provides the access of data to the users in case of new changes are made to or updated frequently. Now let's move ahead and take a look at a few terminologies that you will come across while working on APIs. The first one is HTTP and according to Wikipedia, the hypertext transfer protocol or HTTP is an application protocol for distributed collaborative hypermedia information systems. It basically uses a bunch of methods to determine the flow of data like get and post methods. Next one is URL or also known as uniform resource locator. A URL is a reference to a web resource that specifies its location on a computer network. Then we have JSON, which is a text based data storage format that is designed to be easy to read for both humans and machines. And JSON is generally the most common format for returning data through an API. XML is the second most common format. And then we have REST guys. So coming to the REST, it stands for representational state transfer and is nothing but a few pointers or you can call it as guidelines which are followed to design APIs. Now let us move ahead and discuss what are REST APIs in detail. REST suggests to create an object of the data requested by client and send the values of the object in response to the user. For example, if the user is requesting for a movie in Bangalore at a certain place and time, then you can create an object on the server side. So over here, you have an object and you are sending the state of an object. This is why REST is known as representational state transfer. And if I have to define REST, then representational state transfer aka REST is an architectural style as well as an approach for communications purpose that is used in various web services development. The style of architecture of REST helps in leveraging the lesser use of bandwidth to make an application more suitable for the internet. It is often regarded as the language of the internet and is completely based on the resources. To understand this better, let's dive a little deeper and see how exactly does the REST API work. Basically, the REST API breaks down a transaction in order to create small modules and each of these modules is used to address a specific part of the transaction. And this approach provides more flexibility but requires a lot of effort to be built from the very scratch. So now that you know what REST API is, let us also understand the constraints or principles which must be satisfied for an application to be regarded as REST API. So first one is stateless. So the request sent from a client to a server will contain all the required information to make the server understand the request sent from the client. And this can be either a part of URL, query string, parameters, body or even headers. The URL is used to uniquely identify the resource and the body holds the state of the requesting resource. Once the server processes the request, a response is sent to the client through body, status or headers. Next, we have the client server. So the client server architecture enables a uniform interface and separates clients from the servers. And this actually enhances the portability across multiple platforms as well as the scalability of the server components. And then we have uniform interface. To obtain the uniformity throughout the application, REST has four interface constraints, which is resource identification, 
then we have a resource manipulation using representations self descriptive messages and hypermedia as the engine of application state then we have cacheable so in order to provide better performance the applications are often made cacheable and this is done by labeling the response from the server as cacheable or non cacheable either implicitly or explicitly if the response is defined as cacheable then the client cache can reuse the response data for equivalent responses in the future then we have a layered system so the layered system architecture allows an applications to be more stable by limiting component behavior this type of architecture helps in enhancing the application security as components in each layer cannot interact beyond the next immediate layer they are in also it enables load balancing and provides shared caches for uh, promoting scalability last we have a code on demand so this is an optional constraint and is used the least it permits a client's code or applets to be downloaded and to be used within the application and in essence it simplifies the clients by creating a smart application which doesn't rely on its own architecture now let's move ahead and take a look at a few methods of rest api before that let me just talk about a few dependencies first of all so flask is a micro framework in python which we are going to use for making the api in python in our demo let's take a look at a few methods of rest api guys now all of us working with the technology of the web do crude operations so when i say crude operations i mean that we create a resource read a resource update a resource and delete a resource now to do these actions you can actually use the http methods which are nothing but uh, the rest api methods which are basically you know get post and then we have put method and last we have delete method so i'll show you all these uh, methods in our uh, demo guys and for the project again for starters the very first thing we would need is python and flask micro framework the flask is a micro framework it is lightweight and its uh, modular design makes it easily adaptable to developers need and it has a number of out of the box features like built in development server it has a fast debugger there is integrated support for unit testing the rest full request dispatching is there jinja2 templating is there then you have a secure cookie support unicode based and WSGI compliance is also there and it has an ability to plug any ORM and also it has HTTP request handling as well. Now let's go ahead and start our project to make a REST API using Python and Flask. So let me just uh, quickly tell you what we are going to build over here. So we will make a REST API using Python and Flask guys. So for this I'm going to use the PyCharm. Yeah, I hope everybody is uh, familiar with PyCharm over here. So first of all, I'm just tell you how you can make a simple app using a flask guys. So before that you have to install flask on your systems guys. It's very easy. You can just go to project interpreter find flask and install it and make sure you install pi curl as well because we will be using a few curl commands to make the post and put request across the server and now let me just start guys. So I'll just start from flask import flask and we also have to import jsonify the jsonify function in the flask returns a flask dot response object that already has the appropriate content type header all right so the first we have to give up app and inside this it's pretty easy guys if you compare it with django making a app using flask is a pretty easy job guys now you just Use the route method, create a URL and give it an index method. And from this, I want to return, let's say, welcome to the course API. Now, there's one more thing that I have to do over here. Okay, if name is equal to main then app dot run debug mode is equal to true right now this is uh, uh, the simple uh, code to create my app over here guys so as you can see i imported the flask framework and then this is my app the instance and using the app, I have created a URL which is going to invoke this uh, method index and it's going to return this uh, text part over here. So I'll just run this. I'll open the terminal 
and since my name of the file is app.py just write app.py all right so we have this text guys welcome to the course api so this is how easily i can deploy a server guys okay i'll just close this I'll make a database sort of collection in which I'm going to store a few values including a name course ID and description etc So I'll just copy it uh, from the file I had right guys. So I'll just copy it. So this is okay. I'll just make it a little smaller So this is kind of my uh, database guys, so I have name course ID description and price again So all these values inside each of the dictionaries with corresponding values so I have five entries over here Now I'll show you how I can use the get method the get rest API method to get all these values using just the URL There's nothing much. I have to do over here. It's very easy. It's a very basic example of creating an API guys So I'll just tell you how I can do that So I'll make one more URL guys And after the backslash, let's say the URL is courses and I have to specify the methods which is going to be Get method because we are going to use the get method and after this I want to make a Function And for this I just want to return This is where jsonify is actually used and uh, Using this I want to return the courses and call courses here. Oh, wait one sec guys. I have to put it inside a dictionary Right so my code is done to use the get method actually guys Now you will see what I'm actually trying to do over here. So I'll call app.py Start the server So I think you have noticed this I'm using this URL. I'm able to get all these courses with the description uh, the course IDs the name price everything. So this is how you use the get method guys Now there's one more thing I can uh, I want to tell you guys so you can get these values using the course ID as well I mean you can use the headers inside the URL also So I'll just quickly tell you how you can do that before that we have to terminate this all right So we can create one more URL and this has to be Courses and after that you have to give a header which is int Course ID and methods is equal to Get Now I'll make another function guys So I'm simply going to get the course from the course ID and there has to be course ID over here. After this, I just have to return using the JSONify method. And inside this, I'm just going to provide the course. And over here will come the courses and course ID. All right, so let's run this guys app.py I close this Go to courses Now let's just say I want course this one which has AI ML certification So using the course ID which is 2 but basically I have to provide the index number which is going to be 01 add 2 over here so I have this uh, description AI ML certification. So this is how you get all right. So if I write zero over here I get the course which is at the zero index and if I write four over here I'll get the fourth index if I write let's just say six I get the index error because list index out of range. So this is how you uh, can use the headers so this is one way to use the get method in uh, the API guys Now let me just uh, tell you guys how you can use the post method as well. I'll just close this 
right after this and again you, you can create uh, URLs for uh, almost all of these and instead of get I'll write post over here let's just say create and now I want to get a course guys so I'll just copy this one only write course over here and inside the dictionary I'll paste my code guys and the course ID I'll change it to 5 yes now after this I have to add it to the courses so I'll use courses dot append method and inside this I have to pass the course variable and now I'll just return JSONify and let's just say created call the course once again I forgot to put it inside a dictionary guys now to call this uh, it's a little trickier we have to use the curl command so I'll just run this first of all I'll open another terminal open the server go to the course all right go to the courses now you can see we have one two three four and five entries for the courses with course id zero one two three and four so now let's just uh, run this again so i'll use app.py open server and as you can see we have the index page after this we go to courses and you can see that we have five courses over here with description course id name and price with each course id is equal to zero one two three and four now what i'm going to do open the terminal use the curl command and using i h and i'll provide the content type application json x post and after this i have to provide http local host 5000 and courses i'll just make it a little bigger so you can see i have created a description course id name and price so i'll go to server again reload and as you can see i have added one course over here with the course id 5 which is natural language processing so this is how you use the post method in your api now after this i will show, okay i'll just terminate it so now what i'll do is i'll make another function or i'll make another url to use the put method which is all going to update certain values in our api so for that again i'm going to use app.root and inside this i have to provide the url so for this i'm going to use the header that is integer and inside this i'm going to use the course id because i just want to update one course so i'll use the course id for that and for methods i have to specify it's going to be put method and i have to uh, make one and make one function and provide course id over here as like this and now i'll uh, write whatever i want to update so let's just say i want to update the description of whatever course id that i'm giving and for that we'll just write uh, xyz we just want to see if it updates the value or not and i'll return jsonify in the dictionary of course i'll have course and inside this there'll be courses and there'll be the updated course id all right so i'll run this again guys 
Oh, wait a second. I think we have made a mistake somewhere. All right. Now I'll just run this app.py. Open the terminal. Use the curl command. Just copy this. Okay, so I'm just going to use the post command first of all. All right. Open the server. We'll add the course first of all. Now after this, let's use the put method or before that. All right. And as you had seen in put method, we had the course ID as well. So after this course is, I have to add the course ID, which is let's say five. Yes, run this. Now let's go to the URL five. And as you can see, we have the course ID updated the description value to XYZ, which we were going to do. So we had successfully updated the value in the inside this course using the put method. I'll just terminate it. All right. So I'll just show you how you can use the delete method as well. So then again, you have to use the app dot route. All right. So I'll just copy this again. It's going to be same. The URL is almost same over here. It's just one thing I have to change. This is instead of put, I have to use delete and I'll use this method. And now, all right, I have to provide course ID. Wait a minute guys. After course ID, I have to specify what I want to remove. And inside this, I have to provide the courses course ID. And I want to return the JSONify. Inside this is going to be result. I'll just write as true. Now again, I'll run my server. All right. Go to courses. All right. Open the terminal. Add the curl command. So after running the uh, post command, I'll go to my server, refresh and I have added one more value. I will go back to our program again using the curl command, but instead of post, we will use put. And after courses, I'll specify course ID. So let's say five. All right, so we'll go to the so again, course ID five, we have that. Now I am going to run the curl command with delete method. So we have deleted, let's go check there. It does not exist and for courses, it does not exist. So this is how you make a REST API guys in using Python It's a very basic example. And now that we have come to the end of the session guys, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Edureka. And if you have any questions, you can put them in the comment section below. We'll be happy to get back to you as soon as possible. And do check out Edureka's Python programming certification program. The link is given in the description box below. Thank you and happy learning.